laugh like hell. Let's have some fun doing it. That's a big part of it. But it's just don't waste, it's just don't waste any time or energy. It's all about what we should check that each and every day. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones here in the Academy Sports and Outdoors studios at the Star in Frisco and inside Ford Center. We are joined by Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys take on the Washington football team. Hit the road for the first time in four weeks uh, to take on a Washington team that came uh, within a two-point conversion, coach, of uh, being 2-0 and in the division. When you look at this Washington team, what are you seeing under head coach Ron Rivera? Well, I tell you, I mean, it uh, definitely starts up front, uh, you know, and just from our offensive perspective. You know, this is a, an outstanding defensive line. So, you know, that, that's that's our primary focus and, you know, you know different on uh, the offensive side of the ball. I mean, they do, they do have good playmakers. Um, it, it's a team that plays on time, and and I think that's 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 the challenge, you know, going into it. Uh, I think, but most importantly, you know, this is a rival game and, and will be treated as such. And as you've already stated, this is a big division road game for us. Yeah, I would imagine that it doesn't take much to uh, get your team in the proper frame of mind uh, knowing as disappointing as the loss was last week uh, against Arizona that uh, they've got everything in front of them uh, playing two straight division games here. Uh, definitely. I mean, we're in a unique situation, no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, everything that we want to accomplish as a football team is right in front of us. So and it starts this week. Uh, we, we've had six games. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, ups and downs in, in our first six weeks. Uh, it's important for us to draw from this exper experiences, but the, the reality is we need to make sure we apply, you know, all these, you know, experiences, positive and negative, because everything really gets started for us this week. Uh, you know, we're we understand where we are in the division, um, but as I've already stated, everything that we want to accomplish as a goal is right in front of us. What do you hope that they took out of after reviewing what happened in Monday's game? Uh, the, uh, even though the score got out of hand, if you go back and look at it, as you know, there were just certain uh, some plays that the Cardinals won in that game and the game turns out totally different. What, what do you try to stress to the team when you review things? Well, uh, a couple of things, you know, number one is to stay on time. And with that is, you know, playing playing good team football and you know, running the ball. Uh, not only helps your offense and sets up the play action pass, but it it helps the whole football team, you know, because, you know, time of possession, you know, the defense is not on the field as long. Um, but the fly in the ointment, it, frankly, was the turnovers. Um, because A, it's the, the their possessions that were lost. Uh, B, it's the field position and the stress, the momentum it puts on our defense. Uh, our adversity defense was was not good enough. I, I think we gave up 24 points off of turnovers. And, you know, and frankly, it's happened to us four other times. So uh, when we're making the same mistakes over and over again, we, ha we have to learn from that. And the uniqueness of, of this situation is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a rival game. It's on the road. Uh, but, you know, frankly, we're in first place. And, and I'm not a really a big fan of talking about you know, what, what the standings are in week seven, but uh, to keep things in perspective, everything we want to accomplish as a football team is still in front of us. What are you seeing with this Washington offense with Kyle Allen at uh, the controls? Here's a young guy who got 12 starts for Carolina last year. Obviously, Ron Rivera liked him. He traded for him uh, and uh, now has made a couple of starts for Washington as a high completion percentage. I, I like him. I mean, he's a good young quarterback. I had a chance to watch him a bunch last year. Uh, in Carolina, and and you can see why they traded for him. I mean, he's obviously fits, uh, you know, what they what they want to do on on offense, and you know the familiarity with with the scheme. And um, you know, I think, you know, it's 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 like most teams right now. I think teams are just starting to hit their stride. Uh, the, the the bumps of the road are always a little a little bumpier, higher. And, you know, the highs and lows are come more often. The early part of every season, and I think it's. Uh, is definitely the case for you know both us and Washington. All right, we're just getting started here on the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore, the Dallas Morning News. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T, Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Built for Texas. Built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by Reliant, an NRG company. 
This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios. Now joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. All right, David, here they are, a 2-4 and four record headed to two straight games on the road against division rivals. How critical a juncture of this season is this for the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I think this can really define their season th these next two weeks. Uh, you, you have the potential for that. I, I think it uh, can establish Mike McCarthy's credibility early in his tenure here, and it will also define what this team is going to be. I, it's struggling right now. That's obvious. We've gone through a lot of the reasons. But now you have back-to-back -back division games on the road. If this team is able to win both of those games, ride itself here, you have a completely different outlook for the remainder of the season than you do, let's say, if they split these two, then I think your confidence is just spinning in place. Uh, you're not really sure where you are. And worst case scenario, if you lose two, um, I think that really has a dramatic impact on how the rest of this season unfolds. So I, 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 I rarely make these sort of comments, but I really do believe this is a defining point of the season for them. Let me ask you this, David. Uh, what is uh, most concerning, the turnovers on offense or the way the defense is playing in general? Mike McCarthy will tell you first and foremost it's the turnovers. And that is a – that's put them in a staggeringly bad position every game this year. It's made them play from behind, compromise the playbook, what they can do offensively, uh, put their defense in some untenable positions. It's hard to disagree with that, and they do have more turnovers and the worst turnover ratio in the league. That being said, this defense needs to make a lot of strides. Uh, you look back on what they have given up on the ground. Uh, you know, Kenyon Drake didn't have a run of more than 16 yards all season. He had three runs of more than 16 yards, and one went for 69 yards and a touchdown in that Arizona game. You go back to uh, De Dearns Johnson in the um, – in the in the Cleveland game. He rushed for 95 yards in that game on 13 carries. Johnson only has 33 yards on 12 carries in the two games since. They're allowing players who shouldn't beat them on the ground hurt them, and they're giving up some big plays in the air because of miscommunication on the back end. Uh, you know, they didn't get any pressure really in this last game, which they did get good pressure in the Giants game. Their inconsistency defensively is just really putting them in a bind right now. All right, David, I appreciate it. I'm going to go look up who Dearness Johnson is once again. And the Mike McCarthy <laughs> Show continues in just a moment. One of the critical matchups of this week, it's the Cowboys O-line against the Washington D-line. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco, getting you ready for Dallas versus Washington. And Rob Phillips takes an up-close look at what has been a patchwork Cowboys offensive line. Another week, another challenge for the offensive line. Dak Prescott's ankle injury expected to sideline him four to six months is the most devastating loss for the two and four Cowboys. But no position has been hit harder by injuries than the offensive line. When All-Pro guard Zach Martin suffered a concussion in the first half against Arizona, the Cowboys were down to one O-line starter from training camp, third-year guard Connor Williams. Tackles Tyron Smith and Lyle Collins are expected to spend the rest of the year on IR. Center Joe Looney is currently on IR with a knee injury. When Martin got hurt on Monday night, most of the line featured all first and second year players. Brandon Knight, Connor McGovern, and rookies Tyler Biadish and Terrence Steele. Now Knight is expected to be out at least a couple weeks after knee surgery. Head coach Mike McCarthy said the young group battled through another come from behind game, featuring 54 pass attempts from Andy Dalton. When Martin returns to the lineup, he'll be able to stabilize things on the inside. 
five-time Pro Bowler Travis Frederick was the centerpiece, but he announced his retirement in March. This year's group has been tested in more ways than one. Um, as I've stated time and time again, the best offensive lines are the ones that practice every day together and, and they work every day, particularly play games together. Because I mean, it's just, you know, everything they do is, is right in front of their nose. Every adjustment, every, every you know, every decision, you know, their technique battles are, you know, in a phone booth. And so the ability to continue to work, you know, play in and play out, you know, in the games throughout practice is, is so, so important to that O-line group. Washington's defensive line presents the toughest test for the Cowboys since week one against the Rams. They are loaded with first round picks, including rookie Chase Young, and have 16 sacks through the first six games, tied for seventh in the NFL. Another test for this young, depleted group. For DallasCowboys.com, I'm Rob Phillips. All right, thanks, Rob. Up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, what is that offensive line going up against this week? Brought to you by Windstar. Here's Will McClay looking at the Washington D-line. Today we're going to take a look at the Washington football team's defense, specifically their front four where they have five first-round picks. Here we're going to take a look at the Washington's run defense, and specifically number 93, Allen. And what they're going to try and do is get Washington to play flat, but now they're going to set an edge with 90, and then you see 93 here. He sets the edge. He's able to play off of the block and stop the running back in the hole. Now we're going to take a look at two more of their first round picks, number 90, Sweat, and number 94, Payne. The Eagles are going to try and run a zone play and try and get the defense to run lateral. What kills that is vertical penetration. We'll see that from number 94. 90 sets the edge and 94 penetrates and stops the running back in the back. 94 gets off of the ball. You see he pushes the center back. The running back has nowhere to go and then the edge by 90 stops him in the backfield. The Rams do a good job of getting the, this play blocked and the running back has a big play, but we'll get to see the athleticism of number 90 who runs a 4-4-5 four, four, at 6'5", 260 pounds. There he is on the backside. The run gets to the second level, breaks the tackle, looks like he's gonna take it a distance and then we see that 4-4-5 four, four, speed from Sweat. Now we're gonna take a look at their pass rush and specifically on this play, 99, Chase Young. But what they do is they rush four and allows them to drop and cover seven. All right, we're going to see the speed of 99 getting off the ball. And what they do is run a twist game at the top, but they compress the pocket. All pressure is good pressure, and that forces them into an interception. Now we're going to take a look at another four-man pass rush and how they use Ryan Kerrigan, 91, to squeeze the pocket off of the edge. You have the speed of sweat over the top but then using their two inside pass rushers to compress the pocket and not give the quarterback an opportunity to escape. There you go. All right. You're going to see the get off by 91 and 90. They squeeze him in the pocket. He can't step up because of the pressure up the middle from 94 and 93 and forces a throw away by the quarterback. One more look at the four-man rush, and they're going to run an inside game, but you want to talk about the speed of 99 and 90 off of the edge at exact angles to condense the pocket, and then the pressure up the middle, which does not allow the quarterback to step up. So here we go here. You'll see the pocket there. The quarterback wants to step up. 99 rushes over the top. 90 counters inside, but the pressure in the middle does not allow him to step up, and then they got a party at the quarterback and a great challenge for our offensive line that we've got to be ready for. Thanks, Will. Up next on the Mike McCarthy Show, the coach rejoins us, and we look at this Washington pass defense ranked number two in the National Football League. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, as we take a look at the Washington defense now with the coach who rejoins us. Uh, you know, Coach, uh, Washington has uh, spent on a lot of high draft picks. In fact, first round draft picks uh, in the last four years all on defensive linemen. I want to ask you specifically about the guy they took with the number two overall pick this year, Chase Young. He is an impressive guy, an impressive guy out of Ohio State. No doubt about it. He's as good as advertised. Uh, you know, you look at his measurables, you know, coming out, you know, he's, he's obviously still young. 
um, but you know he has everything you're looking for. So you know he ha he has the length and and, and so this this will be a good battle for us. You know both edge guys play you know are players that we need to you know focus on and um, but th th you know these guys can get it done with a four man rush. And of course they've got a young guy in Montez Sweat, also the veteran Ryan Kerrigan as well. You mentioned it off the top of the show. One of the focuses though is that offensive line against the Washington defensive line and what you're dealing with right now at the tackle position. Uh, Joe Philbin is doing a terrific job, isn't he? Uh, just trying to, to uh, get things uh, squared away to, uh, to be able to protect the quarterback and run the football, isn't he? I mean, that's the challenge. I mean, we're, we're a work in progress, uh, but, you know, we'll have a chance to, to get in pads on Thursday, and uh, that, that'll be big for us. You know, to really uh, the, the time that we're spending, you know, competing in individual drills with the D-line and, you know, carrying that forward through, you know, to, to a nine on seven into the team. So those, those are important practices for us each and every week. Uh, it, it is a challenge when, you know, the, the, the starting five has changed pretty much every week. Uh, but yes, Joe's doing a great job. I would imagine it helps having a veteran quarterback like Andy Dalton as far as helping set the protection and so forth. How much, though, are, are the practice reps uh, helpful for Andy Dalton as he gets his timing down with his receivers right now? I mean, they're, they're you know, the most important. No, no, no question about that. Um, you know, not only just the individual route work, but it's, you know, the communication and the adjustments that happen. You know, on a lot of plays. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, defenses are, are trying to, you know, do things, you know, take things away from you. You know, you look at our last game where the, the pressure increased and the opportunities, you know, outside with individual cuts. So, you know, we need to learn from our past experience. What have you learned about uh, Ezekiel Elliott this week? Uh, obviously, uh, there's a saying about ad adversity revealing character, and he's, he's been a stand-up guy, obviously going through some adversity this week after the couple of fumbles on Monday night, addressed the team, has taken ownership of it. Uh, definitely. I've I, I, I been impressed with Zeke really from day one, and, and to watch him just go through this this week. I mean, he's a pro's pro. I mean, he, he's doing all the little things that you, that you look for in, in, in your veteran players, and. And, and I have great confidence that, you know, this is a clean slate is the way we're approaching it as a football team, especially on offense. And, you know, I, I think we'll, this will be our first step of taking care of the football. One guy that gets back this week is uh, Randy Gregory, eligible to play this week. How has he looked in practice? Randy looks good. I mean, it's uh, I, I think we're all excited for him, you know, proud of the, you know, the path that he's taken, you know, just watching him work on the, you know, on the opposite field. You know, for the you know past two months or last month, or how long it's been, and uh, but he's ready to go. So um, he'll definitely have an opportunity to be up and be part of the 48. And uh, how about Leighton Vander Esch uh, coming back last week? Uh, was it a good first step to to get him back toward uh, get, taking on a full load now? Uh, definitely. I, we we're we we're trying to be very conscious you know, of of his conscientious of his reps, and 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 we definitely hit the target there. Um, so you know, he's a full participant. In practice, and, and I, I look, you know, I look for him to, you know, cut him loose on Sunday. All right, we wrap up this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show in just a moment. Final couple of minutes here of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, is. The Cowboys take on the Washington football team on the road. And coach, uh, before we go, I want to ask you about Alex Smith. It's uh, really one of the heartwarming stories, comeback stories, not only in football and in sports after his injury, which was not only career threatening, but really life threatening. You uh, got started or Alex Smith got started in this league when you were the offensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers back 15 years ago. So you know him well. How how heartwarming was it to you to, to see him make the comeback? Oh, I mean, it's an incredible story. Uh, you know, as you, as you said, I mean, this is a life life threatening situation, and, and just the way it came on him so fast. Um, I'm just just so happy for him and really his family for for what for what he's accomplished. Did I did I think I'd ever see him on the football field again? I, I did not. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's amazing how fast time goes. I mean, it seems like yesterday that uh, you know he was a 21 year old kid from Utah as the number one pick in the draft and has done remarkable uh, things at, at every one of his opportunities. And to see him back on the field, I, I think it was heartwarming to say the least. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. And uh, good luck against that Washington football team on Sunday. Thank you. All right. Great weekend. And we appreciate you joining us here for the Mike McCarthy Show. We'll see you again next week. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Built for Texas. Built for you.
Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass.